nights where you'll be I know, I know You never leave me I know, I know It may look, it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded. I'm we'll sing it in faith tonight. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Yeah. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Jesus. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm Come on, sing it loud tonight. It may. We're not on our own. Even when we try to isolate ourselves to avoid a problem, God, you're with us and you are the solution. So I pray tonight that we would just give control to you. God, we fight our battles by giving them to you. It's not anything that we can do. God, but it's what you can do and the power that you hold. So tonight, all we do is worship. All we do is praise. God, we love you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's in your mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Yeah, come on, celebrate tonight.
Thanks so much for being here. Hey, as you take your seat, give one person 50 high fives, then you can be seated. One person, 50 high fives. would do if I didn't win. I guess we'll never know. Look, I know a lot of bad things are going on right now, but I believe that Jesus is going to make a way where there is no way and there's nothing you say can do about any of it. Yo, 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 what's up, y'all? Hey, if you went to camp, can you raise your hand? All right, all right, all right. That's right, see my boys back there. Hey, if God 
did something amazing inside of you. Can you just go crazy for God? Yeah, that's right. Dude, some of y'all, I remember seeing you before camp and now you look like a totally different person and I mean that in the best way. Like, God really did a new thing, amen? Like, seriously, I, I, I told the leaders earlier, y'all weren't even in there, but I just can't stop shaking my head going, like, what just happened? Like, the amount of amazing things that happened at camp, the new things inside of you, the new things that God did in your friends at camp. If you didn't go to camp, that's totally fine because you're about to feel it here. You're about to feel it here, how God moved in the same way there, he's gonna be moving here. Um, before we get into anything else, if you're in high school, raise your hand real fast. All right, now put your hand down. Look, if you went to camp or regardless of the camp or not, we have something called Heart and Soul coming up next Wednesday. That's right, look, if you've been before, you know it's awesome. If you haven't, let me tell you something about it really fast. It is simply a discipleship program that we have here for only high schoolers. So it's only if you just finished ninth grade all the way up through 12th grade. If you just graduate, you can go as well. But it is legit. Um, it is a nine to three or four o'clock thing every single Wednesday for six or seven weeks. And then right after that, it's youth night. So it's like throughout the summer, you're here for six weeks and you're just up here learning about God, learning about what vocational ministry looks like taking time to pray together, um, having certain speakers, certain um, people like me and Christian and Pastor KB speaking to you guys directly for you guys to take a new step um, in your walk with Jesus. But this is definitely like, I know that I'm going to take a new step with God. So um, make sure you get signed up for that. If you're like, how do I do that, Kendrick? Come find me or go talk to your leader because I just told them everything about it. Um, as you guys know, camp is over and you just saw that bumper video that's called, or maybe it's back there, yeah, Best Friends. Obviously, this whole series is about friends. If you met somebody at camp and you're like best friends now, can you just like give me a whoop, like on the low? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Some of you guys are like best friends forever. I'm like, bro, you know each other for six days. Don't be talking to me like that. Um, but this is a new series called Best Friends, and it's all about friends. Um, it's all about how friends impact you in your relationship with God. It's all about how Jesus is called to be your friends. It's gonna be a bunch of different things simply about friendship and what the Bible and what God says about friendship. But um, before I keep talking about this kind of stuff, y'all ever, this, this is just random. Do y'all ever try to be funny around somebody? Okay, well, uh, all right. Do y'all ever try to be funny around somebody and next thing you know, no one laughs? But then, hold on, hold on, hold on. Lock in real fast but then you, you're not trying to be funny around somebody and everybody starts laughing at you. You're like, bro, are you kidding me right now? Like, like, do I even have control of like, if I'm funny or not? Let me tell you a story real fast. This is, uh, this is definitely a story that I don't know why people find this so funny, but it happened my Y1 year at City Hope College. That's Miss Trisha right there. She's a City Hope College goat over there. If you're thinking about City Hope College, or if you're like, I know it's supposed to go there, you better talk to her after service. But it's my why one year. There's two years at City Hope College. My very first year, I'm 18 years old. And me and Hayden, this is my buddy Hayden over here, um, we had something tragic happen to us at, the, at our uh, dude's college house. House, don't know how to speak English. House. And basically what happened is that we're taking a shower and I'm realizing, oh my gosh, uh, there's no hot water. So I call the landlord and I'm like, yo, there ain't no more hot water. And she goes, hell, that's crazy. You know how to work on a water heater? I said, bro, what? I'm 18 years old. Like, I'm going to ministry school. I don't know how to do that. She's like, all right, we'll try to go figure it out. I looked at Hayden. I'm like, hey, bro, our water heater's broken. Can we, like, try to fix it? like, yeah, sure, bro. So we go over there. I grab a, uh, a screwdriver. Yeah, a screwdriver, a screwdriver is metal. Um, and a water heater is connected to electricity as well. Let's just say that. So I go up to this water here and I'm messing with it. We have no idea what we're doing. Um, and I'm not kidding you. I tried to like turn it or something like that because I Googled a YouTube video. And I'm not kidding you. In the, this electricity went inside my finger and came out of my kneecap. I'm not even playing right now. Like, and I looked at Hayden, I'm like, bro, I just died, like something just happened to me. Like it went in my finger and like, I think it came in my knee, like out of my kneecap. And he's like, he's like, bro, bro, just, and I'm like, yeah, that, like I'm electrocuted. 
Like that's what just happened. So he goes inside, he walks inside and, um, <laughs> dude, I can't believe I'm telling this story right now. Um, and he walks back out to me and goes, dude, Kendrick, I got some bad news, bro. And I'm like, what? As I'm like holding my finger in my knee, like really weirdly. And he goes, dude, all the power that was in the house is now inside of your body. And I guess I missed the class of how that literally makes no sense. Um, but your boy really thought there is electricity inside of me right now. And not only does, does Hayden's amazing influence on me hit me right there. He even gets somebody on the phone and is like, dude, Kendrick also has asthma. So tell him that if he has electricity inside of him, that if he has asthma, it's like 20 times worse. So Hayden goes, bro, I need you to talk to Lucas. He knows everything. If Luke, if y'all know Lucas, he don't. Um, but he, he gives the phone, to, he gives me the phone and I'm talking to Lucas. I'm like, bro, I also have asthma. He goes, dude, you have asthma? And I'm like, yes, I have asthma. What does that mean, bro? I got electricity inside of me right now. Like, and, and he goes, you got to go to the hospital immediately. And I'm looking at Hayden and I don't know how Hayden kept a straight face this entire time. We get in my car and we start driving to the hospital. Yo, this just keeps on going. Eventually, Hayden's, so Hayden's driving me. I'm sitting in the car like this. I'm like, bro, I got it inside of me. I'm so gullible, oh my gosh. And the next thing you know, we end up turning around. I didn't even get that it was a joke. And I'm like, what are you doing, bro? I gotta go to the hospital. He's like, dude, it's a joke, chill out. And he, you know, I guess, describes science to me at that point. Um, I say let's say this, Hayden's actually, an amazing friend, but it literally, it, it made me think about something. Like I was genuinely scared. Like the decision that Hayden made, I love you, bro, but that, that destroyed me. The decision that, that Hayden made, my good friend, actually affected me and I knew was actually going to deter, I thought was going to determine the rest of my life, even though it makes no sense. I thought, like I knew in that moment what he said and what he was trying to, what was, what was happening was actually gonna affect my entire future. And I don't know if you guys have ever thought about this, but sometimes I wonder, what does God think about quality friends? Like seriously, what is, God, like, is there stuff in the Bible about, like when you hear a, 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 a series that's called Best Friends, sometimes you're like, yeah, this is gonna be a chill one. But I think that when we get our focus on what God actually describes as quality friends, watch what will happen inside of you. There's a verse, and it's Proverbs 27, nine, and it says this, the reason why I'm bringing this up because there's two things that actually make up a quality friend that will change your future completely, y'all. And Proverbs 27, nine says this, the heartfelt counsel of a friend is as sweet as perfume and incense. If you are Versace boys, you know what I'm talking about. That junk slaps, it smells so good. I see you back there, that's what I'm talking about. But if you don't know, understand what that verse means, the heartfelt counsel of a friend, counsel simply just means advice. Not the type of advice that Hayden gave me, not that kind of stuff, that's not what I'm talking about. But if you guys, look into the Bible, or if you've ever been reading the Bible, there are multiple times where it talks about perfume, it talks about incense, you're like, bro, what does that even mean? Like, why is that even significant? Dude, perfume and incense is not even just like today. There was, it was so significant and so valuable that when you died, people would go and put incense and perfume on your body. Now, they just bury you underneath the ground. But back then, it was so valuable that they put it on dead people. And also sometimes it was the only thing that people had in their entire house was actually worth something. And I want you guys to know today, I'm preaching about friendship. But some of you guys, you left camp and you're like, dude, I'm completely changed. I have new friends. I want you to seek after wise counsel, wise advice. Counsel sounds weird, I know, but just think about it as advice. Because here's the truth. A friend who gives godly advice will determine your future. A friend who gives godly advice will determine your future. How do we know that? The Bible simply just said it. God's word says that. And I want you guys to know, 
Man, there have been times I've had friends come up to me and be like, hey, this is what I feel like is going on in your heart right now. And uh, Kendrick, I really think you may need to like shift some things. Friends, but also mentors. I remember being in City Hope College and Pastor Danny looking at me and, and Hayden looking at me as a brother and being like, hey, this is how I think you should go about this situation. And it made me uncomfortable at first, but I was like, you know what? I need this because it is sweet, just like something that's super valuable in our real life. And some of y'all in here, maybe you're, I'll actually give an example. I remember one time I was in high school and I was sitting down at the lunch table and uh, these guys were over here and I eventually had to remove myself because I realized they were not really a good like effect on me, I guess influence. And I sit at the end of the table, so that's like, this is like the, the beginning of the table. I sit all the way like over here. And I hear them talking about something and one of the dudes is truly like, I need some advice, guys. I think I, I, think I overstepped in my relationship. And, and I had kind of, I was, I had taken myself out of this group simply just because there was, there were really bad influence on me. But one of the dudes was like, I, I don't know what to do in this relationship. Am, am I overstepping my boundaries? And it, about five seconds of just silence went by because nobody's vulnerable like that at a lunch table, I guess. And one dude finally speaks up and he goes, bro, you know what? Whatever you feel like in your heart, just do it. Like, if you feel that way, if you really feel like your heart's connected in that way, just do it. And when I tell you my heart crumbled because there have been times in my life that I said, no, 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 I don't want, I don't want like advice from somebody that I know is healthy. It says that wise counsel, counsel from a friend is sweet, y'all. And in that moment, I could feel the negativity of just, of just man following wherever you wanna go. And when I tell you in the moment, sometimes it can feel weird and feel like, mm, I don't like the fact that someone just tried to help me in that moment. I don't like my, that my brother or my sister or my mentor or friend tried to help me in that moment, but watch what it will do to you. And, and, and this, is my, this is my second thing. In Proverbs 13, 20, it says this, check this out. Walk with the wise and become wise. For a companion of fools suffers harm. This is, Pro, this is Proverbs, so it's a pretty cool, random, like, they, one second Proverbs would be like, if you look like this and you do this and this, and the next one's like, make sure that if you're married and you're like, bro, what is happening right now? But it says, walk with the wise and become wise for a companion of fools suffers harm. Maybe you've never heard that verse in your life. But literally what it means to simply just walk Maybe it is literally walking with somebody or maybe it's simply just doing life with somebody. You know, one of the most dangerous things is, is like for me, I would get so comfortable with myself or I would, get, I would be like, no, 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 I don't, I don't, like I'm just gonna isolate myself for a little bit. I think it's just, I think just me and God, like me and God are chill. Next thing you know, I find myself in a place where I'm kind of isolated and I don't even feel like I'm around wise people anymore because it's not rubbing off on me. How do I know it actually rubs off on you? Because it says, walk with the wise and you will become wise. Um, I want you to know this today. And I feel like my heart is really stirred up. And my heart specifically for this is because I just put myself back in high school and I put myself back in middle school. And I, I see where I was and immediately, guys, if you went to camp or you didn't, right now is the time to start seeking friends that will literally make it to where your future is affected forever. And the truth is a friend who walks with God will determine your future. A friend who walks with God will determine your future. Have y'all ever heard, I don't know if you've ever heard the verse, but it basically says that if you want wisdom, ask God for it. I'm like, when I read that verse every single time, I'm like, God, why do I complicate you all the time? Like, what the heck? But if you want wisdom, just ask for it. And I promise you, any of your friends in this room, any of you, you if you've been spending time with God, if you've been, if you've been walking with God and, and it's been amazing, I promise you there is wisdom that God's been giving you. And if you're like, man, I need that from somebody else, which we all do, walk with them. Spend time with them. Like, as non-spiritual as it sounds, like sometimes you just need to get out of your house during the summer and just go hang out with people that you know are healthy for you. 
Because me, I can be on Instagram for hours. I can be on TikTok for hours. And I think, oh, I have good people at church. I, can just, I, have, I have that time on Wednesday. I have that time on Sunday. But it says to walk. It doesn't say think about the wise and you'll become wise. Walk with them. I don't know if we have any uh, fishermen in the room or fisherwoman. Um, that's right. But I don't know if you've ever been fishing before. It does not matter if you catch all the fish in the sea or if you literally just go get bait fish. You come back to your house smelling like a whole fish. Like it does not matter. It doesn't matter. You're like, man, we didn't catch any fish. And your mom, you get home to your mom. She's like, ooh, you stink. And you're like, what do you mean? We didn't even catch anything. It's because you were dealing with bait fish the whole time. And I want you to hear this today. Who you hang around is gonna rub off on you. And I want you to envision yourself 21 years old, 29 years old, 34 years old, 40 years old, and realize the, the, the five closest people to you right now is gonna tell your future. This doesn't sound like something that's really like, in the Bible or it's something that's really big. But I just gave you two verses that are so, so big. And maybe, maybe the goal for you right now is to literally go now and be around wise people like now to where you don't isolate yourself. This is a really specific talk with you guys. I'm not really trying to like preach and like give you this big thing. I want this to be something where you feel like, this summer is going to be amazing. I'm about, I'm about to go into college. I'm about to go into ninth grade. I'm halfway through high school. I just finished middle school. I want you to really believe that this summer will be amazing if you bring healthy people around you. You'll find yourself thinking a certain way and you have a friend who gives you that godly wisdom, that godly counsel and advice that goes, hey, this is how you should go about that. And when you get around friends who are just spending time with God, walking with God so much, there's no guess. If you've ever been around somebody that has spent time with God, you can just, it's like Moses when he was on the mountain. He came, he came down from spending time with him and it says that his face was beaming. You know when you spend time in God's presence, you just feel like, ooh, I got this. Like I can, I can actually like walk throughout my day. When you have friends, when you have people in your life, people right beside you who dwell in the presence of God, and that just means spending time with Him. Watch how your life will change. Watch how your future will change. And Maybe you're here today and you're like, dude, I met the best people at camp. Or I know some amazing people. I know some amazing people that I should be hanging out with, but for some reason, I just love to just get around people that are, aren't ultimately healthy for me. And I want you to simply just walk with them. Like, even if you've got to go up to them like, hey, I've been, I've been uh, hanging out with the wrong crowd and I really just want to know, do you, are you mind if I like, hang out with you and just learn from you? Or maybe you need to go up to a friend that you know you can trust and they're gonna, and you can tell them, hey, uh, what do you think I should do in this scenario? I've been trying to like bury this underneath the ground ever since camp ended. And I really would like if you could give me some like wise, just advice right now. Is what I'm saying kind of making sense to you? Because just know, that there is freedom in this. There's freedom when you bring healthy people around you. I'm gonna pray for you guys and then we're gonna go into small groups and I and just, just know this, I love y'all so much and there is so much fun in life when you have fun people who are filled up with God and who are not afraid to look you in the face and go, hey, you're better than that. I want you to go down this better road. I know you really wanna go there for college, but why do you wanna go there for college? I know, I know that you want to go and be a part of this friend group um, after this block at school, but why do you, you wanna do that? 
And if any, anything what I'm saying is making sense, we're gonna go into small groups in a second. And I just want you to talk with your friends. I want you to talk with your leader and be like, man, this is what I've been struggling with. Or how can you be that friend? Let me pray for you guys. And we're gonna go into an awesome time of small groups. God, thank you so much for every single student and leader in this room. I believe a lot of students in here, their life was just changed completely from last week. And even if they didn't go, I believe you're, you're changing their life right now. There are things that they didn't realize they had inside of them and God, you broke that off of them or God, you restored some things that were, that were dormant and you brought it back to life. Now, God, the journey begins. Lord, the journey begins. And if there's anybody here that knows that they have people that they bring around themselves that isn't necessarily the best for them, God, I pray that they'd be able to be a light to other people. Give, give advice that's from you, Lord, and have friends that actually spend time with you. God, we love you and we thank you. And everybody in this room said, Amen. That's right. Come on.